Adobe has just updated Lightroom and Camera Raw. So we're going to look at Lightroom Classic Desktop, and I'm going to save the best for last in Camera Raw. There's an exciting new feature. Let's have a look. So the first one we're going to look at is focusing inside Tethered Capture. So let's go to File, Tethered Capture, and we're going to start the Tethered Capture, and I'm going to click OK. Camera I have attached here is a Sony a7S III. Now, this works with Sony, Canon, and Nikon. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the live view. Let's just move this bar out of the way. And this is my camera right now. And so if we click here, what it will do is it will focus on the area that we click on. So let's try this Angry Bird. And it will focus. We've got an Imperial Stormtrooper back here. And so I could see this being really useful for things like desktop photography, product photography, um, seems to work really well. Uh, we can go in here and we can change the type of focus that we're using here as well. So the only thing I'm seeing, as you can see here, it's a little bit of a delay on a focus. So you may not be using this with live people or models, but definitely for desktop, I can find this really great when you mount your camera. But why don't we try it for macro lens and see if it works with my macro. Hang on one second, I'll just put that on. One of the nice things about the new tethering, I don't have to pull out the cable and put it back in when I reconnect the camera because I turned it off to change the lens, obviously. All right, so we're looking at this. This is a 90 mil macro. Let's put the focus on the eyes. All right, so I could see this being really good for macro photography, and this is using the 90 mil Sony macro. And the next new feature is, um, let's say it's interesting for me. So um, if you saw my video I put out recently, I showed the adaptive profiles inside of Camera Raw, and for a second, you might have seen a video that I put out on Lightroom. Well, it wasn't actually supposed to be in Lightroom at the time, but now it is here in Lightroom. So we can go here and we have the adaptive profiles. The reason I say that is I'll link to that other video. It's now live again, and you guys can check out a more in-depth look. But if we go here and we start working with our photographs, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna choose a color profile. This is a great way to start your images, but if we scroll down, we've got adaptive profiles in here now. And we have an adaptive color and an adaptive black and white. So if we look at the regular, here's the photograph. Here's the adaptive color. So what it does is it actually uses the AI to look at the photograph and then create the best profile for the starting place. Now, the beautiful thing about working with this profile is none of the sliders have been adjusted yet. This is just the starting place. So now we can come in, we can do our adjustments, but you can see we're going to get a much better starting place, which is going to result in better images. So I will link to my more in-depth tutorial I did on this. And this also works extremely well with HDR images. And there's also been some performance improvements inside of Lightroom Classic, which are quite significant. One of them is if we are working inside here with the cropping, if we notice if we grab the cropping, we rotate it, notice it's now very, very responsive, which is really nice. Another one is when we're working with masks. If we have multiple masks, you might have noticed previously things would slow down quite a bit. Let's just do a quick mask here for the sky. Let's create a, a gradient mask. I just want to get a few masks going in here. All right. Once we had a couple of masks going, things would get really slow. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab another one with the brush. And let's grab this big brush here and look at this. As you can see, performance is pretty much real time so so that's definitely been sped up now i'm saving the best for last that's going to be the one in camera raw you guys are going to love it but before we do that let's jump into lightroom desktop if you're not familiar with this lightroom it was originally part of the lightroom mobile workflow you know which would work with your ipad which works with your phone still does syncs with everything in the cloud um recently they've added local storage so you can actually use this lab with your images on your hard drive now as well so it has most of the same functionality that is inside of lightroom classic um, but it has a more modern interface. I know some people are switching to it. I'm curious. Let me know in the comments if you're using this as your main editor now or if you're still using Lightroom Classic. But anyway, let's look at the new features in here. So one of the big things that's really been holding this back as a real first-class desktop app is the ability to work with multiple monitors because most of us are working with, we know, a couple of monitors now. So let's go in here and we just click in there and we have the ability 
to go into the second monitor. We can look at detail, which is going to give us, you know, a full screen image. We can do our grids, all that kind of fun stuff. So why don't we just do a square grid? And that's going to open up on the second monitor because you can't see it. I'm going to drag it in here and you're going to see, OK, yep, that's what we have. Let me shrink it down a little bit because I've got the resolution set lower on this monitor for the sake of screen recording. All right, so we can see there's our grid views. We can go in, we can select different photos. Like say, hey, I want this photo instead. And you can see that comes in. So we can work with the two monitors. It's a great way of working. Now, another new feature that's really nice is an update on the compare view. So if you look at the bottom, there's the different views. All right, so let's go to com compare view. So one of the things we can do in here now is we can do a before and after. And that means that we can see the adjustments we're making. So obviously both these images are the same, but as we start to make adjustments, we can see what's happening to our image. And of course we can look at the before and after. So we can check, oh, am I losing detail? Uh, are the adjustments I'm making actually really giving me the result I want? And so you can quickly compare it to the originals. So that's a nice new feature. So I'm not sure how many of you are using Lightroom with your phones, your mobile devices. Let me know in the comments as well, because if it, you are, I'll do more tutorials on that. So there's three quick updates inside of Lightroom Mobile. I'll just mention them because once again, I don't know how many of you are, are doing that right now. Uh, one simplified sharing, so it makes it easier to share those images. Um, it's got some quick actions, which makes it easier to do things, you know, such as suggested edits, for example. And then the third one, which I think is a big one, is your HDR videos now stay in HDR. And if you're working with mobile, you're probably quite familiar with HDR imagery and video. All right, here's the big one we want to look at inside of Camera Raw, and that is the ability to remove people. So we know we can do that with the Remove tool inside of Photoshop, but Camera Raw now has it, and let's have a look. Let's go to Filter, Camera Raw. Now, two things. So number one, make sure you update Photoshop today. Um, otherwise, this feature is not going to be there. And then the second thing, you need to enable it under Tech Previews. So see this little gear? Click on there. You'll see Technology Previews. Turn that on restart Photoshop and then that feature will be here. Let's have a look. So we're going to go under the remove tool. Make sure you're using the AI remove and then distraction removal right where reflections are. You're going to see we now have the ability to do people. And so this is going to be an especially tricky one because not only do we have the people on here, but we also have the reflections of the people here on the bean. And notice it missed a couple, which is fine because those are overhead views. Very difficult to tell those are people, but selected pretty much everything. All right, so select them all. So if there's anything here that you do not want to select, you would just simply select it here and then hit the delete key and that would remove it. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to see how well it does. And this is going to take a little while. What I'm going to do is I'm going to speed it up just so you don't get bored. Oh, wow. Look at that. So overall, that's done a really amazing job, not only getting rid of the people, but also the reflections. Now, if there's a little bits left over, it's no big deal. We can just use the remove tool here. Just use the generator remove, turn on text objects. We can select these objects very quickly. Obviously, it's only going to detect the first one. And then after that, we're going to select the other people. And let's see if we can get close to a perfect result. And then hit remove. And there we go. All right, so now you don't have to wait for all the people to move away. You can just go in and fix these very easily inside of Camera Raw. I'm very excited about this one. Now, don't forget to go to your Creative Cloud app and update all these apps to get access to the new features. If you don't see the new features, it's because you don't have the latest version. All right, so let me know in the comments underneath what is your favorite new feature there? How do you see this kind of evolving? And once again, I'm curious, are you using the Lightroom Classic or are you using Lightroom Desktop? And if you watch this video, you should know the difference now. And if you're new, welcome to the cafe. Hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and you won't miss any of my tutorials. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.